And a lot of times people come to me and say, oh, you know, one of the coaches told me uh, that I need, you know, to drag the, uh, the bottom of the racket towards the ball and things like that. Uh, but you really shouldn't do it. You shouldn't focus on it, on the other hand. It should be more natural. Uh, and if you watch the re slag video, you're already going to be having this aha uh -huh moment because you're going to understand that it actually should be natural for you to do that. But if you haven't had it, watch this video. We're going to explain exactly what we mean by that. All right, guys. So, so many people uh, try to commit to their game and change it and, and get better. But so many times it doesn't happen because there's not enough commitment. A lot of people try to get from 4-0 to 4-5 or from 2-5 to 3-0 and what happens, they try for a couple of days and so on and so forth and then just cannot commit. So we decided to take a different approach and make it happen for you. We're going to make you, uh, walk you through all the steps to get you better. We're going to be your help from one day one to uh, until you get better. So we created a 15-day challenge for you for your kick serve. No matter if you know how to kick the serve, for your 2-5, 5-0, no matter, we're going to help you out to get better or just st get started. Now, what we need you to do, we need to, you to sign up for this 15-day challenge right now, going in the link below, because after 15 days, we're going to close it up. We're not going to give it to nobody. So make sure, sign up now. You have only 15 days to sign up for it, and we'll close it up. We will not have it anymore, so you have to do it now. And it's only for those 15 days, so you have to commit and do it every day. You'll have to go on the link below. You cannot skip any day. You have to commit to for 15 days in order to improve the challenge. If you don't like the challenge, don't even try. Get on to something else, but we need people that are committed to their game. We're gonna help them out. All right, guys, so Aritz is gonna feed the ball to me, and uh, first one, and I actually had to roll up my sleeve so you can see a difference of when I'm gonna feed, uh, hit the ball uh, you know, actually trying to focus on dr uh, dragging my bottom of a racket and then the second one I'm going to do more natural, more relaxed way. So, so you'll see the difference is going to be in the slow-mo in a second, so you won't hear me. Uh, but you'll see what's the difference, all right? Here we go. All right, so you saw the slow motions of two forehands, uh, and if you really paid attention, you can see how much more stiff the first one was. Uh, you could see that my, uh, my muscles on the arm were so stiff, and, and, and the motion was very robotic, mechanical, comparing to the second one was more relaxed. So what happens in the case when you start actually focusing on that, you're gonna be you know, holding the racket tighter, and, and as you're swinging through the ball, you're gonna be very, Stiff. Now, another problem with that is that it sends the signal to our brain where we're already so tight. So usually the common mistake in that case, people actually toss their wrist forward a little bit and they start overusing their wrist. Uh, it decreases the power. You don't get enough top spin because it's, all, it's a lot of pressure on your wrist. Now, the second way you're more relaxed, so you get release of your wrist at the point of contact and you get a low more racket at speed you uh, prevent injuries that way as well because if you don't stay too uh, stiff with that, if you miss hit the ball a little bit close to the frame, it doesn't put too much pressure on your arm, so you will not have as much of uh, tennis elbows and shoulder problems and things like that. So you can see the difference. Now, let's, let me explain why this is, should be more natural, right? So this pr problem, with, it's, it also like, it re relates to wrist leg, the, the dragging the bottom of the racket is basically the wrist leg itself. Uh, so when you guys started, the racket has certain weight, right? So for example, it's an object that has certain weight. So when you start swinging, for example, you start with the shoulder, the racket will drop back naturally, no matter what you try to do. So look, let's see. See, as soon as I start in motion, my racket drops back. Now, if you're actually trying to do it yourself, you'll have to muscle that p motion itself. So you're going to start muscling every forehand. You're not going to be using your body, your core as much. And uh, at the end of the day, you're just going to get tired at a certain point hitting the ball. So you want to be a really relaxed in that motion. You just take your racket back. And if you hold your left hand on the racket, it will prevent you from dro dropping the racket down. Make sure you hold it mostly with your left hand. Your right hand just there present on the racket. When you start turning your shoulders and opening up to hit the ball, that racket is going to drop automatically. And as you're swinging forward, 
your bottom of the racket will be following forward no matter what. Okay, so the most common mistakes that people do, for example, is not holding the left, hand, uh, left hand on the racket long enough so they open up too early, and then they since they're muscling their racket. So it always comes out to the point where you're staying too stiff, you're holding the racket too tight throughout the whole point, and that's why you wouldn't be able to do the, uh, the, that motion itself. So my main uh, advice for you, just make sure focus on in between shots, holding your racket with your left hand mostly. If you're right-handed player, just stay relaxed on the bottom of the racket, barely holding it. And when you get sideways, make sure hold it a little bit longer. And as you start swinging, keep it as relaxed as possible right until point of contact. When you hit the ball, you will just tie up your fingers a little bit. So it would look more or less like this. You're turning and swinging through the ball. You see, you're turning, how I'm holding my racket, it will happen automatically. Now, another suggestion that I find sometimes, that people actually don't drop their racket under the ball. So what happens, they go from this point and then start swinging forward. So they don't have that chance to get the, uh, the wrist leg and the bottom of the racket going to the ball. So make sure as you start swinging, you can even just kind of relax so the racket starts the motion itself. See, if I'm just relaxing, the racket is going to go down no matter if I try or not. So you're just kind of getting set up, the racket starts dr dropping down, and you pick it up at the end, So which will help you to get the racket back and generate the wrist leg and get the bottom of the racket moving forward. So go back, review those slow motions, trying to see, and try to actually implement it while you're hitting the ball. It's more of a feel rather than trying to do it mechanical and do some drills and just getting the feel of it, of how you have to use the swing itself. Alright guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video, but now remember, we have a 15 day challenge that is going to expire in 15 days, so you have to sign up now uh, for the challenge, you will be forced to do it for 15 days, it's, it's a commitment, so if you don't want to commit to it, don't do it, but we really want to help you, and then we'll figure that was the best way to actually make an improvement for you, we're going to help you out every day, there will be videos and a, a lot of material that you'll need to have in order to help your kick serve, so sign up now, go under the link below, don't waste any minute.